I'm L Director, this is L Director Vision, and you are watching Indie Rebel, Hollywood Effects Without the Hollywood Budget. Today, we are going to take a look at a very useful and versatile uh, visual effects technique called projection mapping. Now, this is something I used to do all the time in Nuke, and it really wasn't until recently that I finally figured out how to do this here inside of Fusion. And now that I can do this in Fusion again, I'm super happy. So, basically, what we're trying to do, let's go and make this bigger so we can see. Let's say this is our shot, all right? And there's nothing extraordinary about it, but some grip forgot to remove the sandbag from the shot and you know the cinematographer didn't catch it. Whatever, we're just fabricating the story. I put the bag there just to illustrate my purposes, but this is something you'll see. Some Something will get left into a shot that you don't wanna be there and we need to take it out. Now, if you take this to an After Effects artist, the first thing that they will probably try to do is say, oh, we can run it through Mocha and they're gonna try to do a planar track on it. Here's the problem with planar tracking. I mean, we can planar track here inside of Fusion too, and I can show you exactly why it won't work. But let me just try to explain. Basically, we are dealing with multiple planes. A planar tracker only works on one plane. So what are the two planes? Well, we've got the ground plane right here, right? You can imagine a vanishing point off here in the distance, and all the lines on the ground plane head off to that vanishing point. That's one plane. We also have the closet door, the wall right here, right? And imagine a vanishing point down here at the bottom of the screen. And all these lines would be heading towards that vanishing point down there. So we're actually dealing with two three-dimensional planes that we need to deal, deal with. And that's why we cannot use a typical planar track. And some people say, well, you track one plane, then you track the other plane, and you make two patches for both. No. We're going to do this all in one go. And we're what we're going to do is basically reconstruct the, the scene in 3D space and then paint out a clean plate and project that onto the reconstruction of the scene. We're going to pretend like the sandbag isn't even there when we build it. Um, and yeah, you'll, I think you'll get a better feel for this, how this all goes along. So we're going to be doing some 3D compositing today. We haven't done a whole lot of this before. I kind of did a little bit with a, our matte painting tutorial a couple months back. But this is something that you will find yourself using all the time. You can also use this to take a still photo and reconstruct it in 3D and then add a virtual camera move to it. Okay, so projections are just extremely powerful. So let's go ahead and get started with it. We're gonna shrink that down for just a little bit. And the very first step, as you might imagine, would be adding a camera tracker. So I'm gonna go shift space, type in camera, and I'm gonna go grab the camera tracker node. We're just gonna move it up here out of the way for now. Let's go ahead and view it. I wanna start from the beginning of the shot and I'm going to preview my track features and I want to turn down the detection threshold a little bit and also the minimum feature separation. We're going to turn that down too just to give us some more points to work with. Go ahead and hit auto track. Now I'm doing this all in real time. I am using Fusion standalone right now just for performance but everything here will work inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio on the Fusion page. Now that the shot is tracked we're going to click camera and I already have mine pre-configured here with my uh, camera that I have. I have an Ursa Mini 4K, which is the same sensor as the production camera 4K. And I know that we shot it at 16 by 9, so I'm going to click that. And I know that I had a 24 millimeter lens, so I'm going to set that up as well. Once I've set up my stuff for the camera, I'm going to come over here to Solve. And I want to go under Solve Options and uncheck refine focal length. I already know the focal length. I programmed in the focal length. I don't want it to change it. Once we've done that, we're just gonna go and click solve. And now we wait it out. This might take a minute or two, um, but it's a key part of the process that actually didn't go too bad. That went pretty quick, almost done. And now we're done. There were no cuts there at all. So uh, let's take a look. Yep, that looks great. And we can see that our solve error is 0.26 pixels. I, I will live with that. That is perfectly acceptable to me. What we want to do now is go ahead and set up our 3D scenes. We're going to click over to the export tab. You can see how logical this is, right? Start with the tracking, then we program our camera, then we solve. Now we're going to export our 3D scene. And I'm going to come down here and just set a few things up real quick. One of the things that was very easy to do in Nuke that was more difficult to do in Fusion was I wanted to like, be able to select a bunch of tracking markers here. So let's say like these ones 
in these ones. I'm holding shift to select multiples like that. And I want to make these my ground plane. Well, nuke, I would right click and go set ground plane. I looked and looked, look, there's no options. Finally, I found it. Over here in the export tab under 3D scene transform, there's a button that says aligned. And if we make that unaligned, now I can set some stuff from my selection. So I can say in my XZ plane, which is the ground, I'm going to set that from selection. And we're going to make this point right there the origin. Okay. Now, if I bounce back to aligned, we can see it's using those features that I programmed and I'm ready to export my 3D scene. So this is a 3D tracking scene that Fusion creates. Let's go and take a closer look at this here. It's made up of a few different things. First off, we have the camera, zoom in, there we go, which is being piped in with a, a backdrop from the actual shot itself. That goes into the pink box. We have a camera, we have a point cloud, we have a ground plane, oops, and that all goes into what's called a merge 3D. Let's go and take a look at that. If we view the merge 3D, I just select one. Some people like to drag their nodes up into the viewer. I just press one. Again, I'm, I'm a new guy, right? So we do that and we can now see our scene and our, our shot. And it's kind of a bit of a mess, but if I go back to my point cloud, I can change the size of these points down. There we go. And I can now using alt and control and the middle mouse button navigate around my scene and really get a feel for how this is built out. If we look at all these points, we can see a ground plane, okay? We see the little blob here where the sandbag is. And if we look, we can even see points that make up the sandbag. And I've got some points back here representing the, the back wall of the closet. So that's pretty cool. If I zoom out, we can see that there is a virtual camera and the camera moves around the scene. And it has a little screen down here at the end. I'm not a big fan of that, so I like to get rid of it. I'm going to select the camera. And if we go over to image, it says enable image plane. And you try to uncheck it, and it doesn't work. What's going on? Well, if we look, there's a little lock icon here. Fusion locks the camera so you don't make any changes to it, which is technically a good thing. But we want to go ahead and unlock it. So if you look up here in the upper right-hand corner, there's an unlock switch. We can unlock it. Get rid of that image plane and then we can go ahead and lock it back up again, okay? Where we're good to go, we're not gonna change anything else on that. And now we've got just a, a camera that starts here and it pans around the shot. It moves in 3D space, which is really cool. We can see how it moves, okay? We can see all of its keyframes. We can see the, the path that it's gonna take, right? And that, that construction is perfect. So what now I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and build out my scene in 3D. We're going to do it rudimentary and then we're going to do a projection and then we're going to finish building it. You'll see as we go. I'm also going to go and get rid of the ground plane. I don't need that right now. So to build our scene in 3D, let's go and kind of get to a decent view like this here. That'll work. I'm going to add an image plane. Okay, and this one's going to be the ground. I have an F2 on the keyboard. We're going to call it ground. We're going to drop it into the merge. There it is, just like that. I want to go ahead and rotate it. So with the ground selected, I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to rotate it on X by negative 90 degrees. That rotates it down and we're going to just scale it up nice and big like that. Because I aligned my scene with the ground plane and stuff to begin with before we came in here, we can see it's now lined up right here on the ground and that should be pretty good. We might have to make some tweaks, but we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and add another image plane. And we're going to name this one wall and we're going to drag that one down okay so we got ground and wall not ground and pound ground and wall <laughs> and if I go to my transform settings for the wall we can kind of see the outline right here let's see get to where you guys can see like that let's go ahead and scale it up nice and big looking good and i know this is all ground and that the wall is really kind of right about over here so i'm going to go ahead and just move it back Kind of in 3D space that way. We'll add a little bit of a rotation to it as well. Knowing that there needs to be a little bit of a twist. All right. So that is the basic geometry that we're going to use. What we need to do now is actually be able to see what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and actually do our paint out. And then we'll come back to this. To paint out the sandbag, we want to pick a frame. And we want to pick a frame where... That's kind of central and it represents the, the rest of the shot. And I'll show you why. I, here was a sample I did of this before. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and play it through a few times. 
And it's not bad. You know, I've got some rough roto going on. You can see it jumping and making some edges. But the biggest issue is that if I start here at the beginning, the texture looks okay. It's a little bit soft, but the overall the texture looks good. But when I get to the end of the shot, there's stretching going on with the texture. And that's because I did this based upon the first frame of the shot. And by the time I get to the end frame, the way the projection works, we're now looking at a stretched out version of it. Projections are only good from certain points of view. And that's what we'll see as this goes. So what I want to do is actually pick a frame that's a little bit more central that represents both the heads and tails of the shot. And that's what we're going to do. And you can see a side effect of building the shot out in 3D is you get, you know, 3D shadows being cast on your geometry. And that's another tutorial for another time. Right now, I just want to focus on the basic projection and rig removal. So let's see what we can do about that. If I scroll through my shot and I think frame 95 is a good representation. We're kind of head on at the this shot, right? Where we're looking at it kind of from the front. We're off to the, the right hand side over here. We're off to the left hand side over here. But frame 95, we're kind of straight on. If I look at it closely, there's not a lot of motion blur right now. It's a relatively clean image to work with. So we're gonna use frame 95. So what I wanna do is I'm going to take my camera 3D, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna paste it up here. And we're gonna rename this paste one, hit F2 to rename, PROJ for projection 95, and hit okay. And what that does is I can look at that and tell me this projection camera on frame 95. The reason why this is important is that you might be working on a shot with multiple projections to remove it because maybe there's so much parallax in the scene that you're gonna have a, a projection at the beginning, you'll have a projection in the middle, you'll have a projection at the end, and you're gonna cross fade between each of those as it goes on, morphing from one to the next. And you need to be able to know which keyframe you're working with, which frame needs to be painted and all that. So we're gonna work with frame 95, and that's why I wanna label that camera as 95. And uh, I might even call it projection cam 95. And now I know that that's the camera, because again, we're looking at these in this tile view like this, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. All right, let's go ahead and just kind of shuffle our scene around here. I'm gonna move my point cloud down here. In fact, I don't even need the point cloud, let's we'll get that out of the way. This is my animated camera, we're gonna move that down. Put my projection camera, I don't know, over here somewhere. Just give ourselves some room to work with, right? All right, and let's add a paint node. So I'm gonna come up here and add a paint node. And right before the paint node, I'm going to freeze my frame here on frame 95 that I wanna be working on. So I'm gonna go shift space, time stretcher, okay? I'm gonna open the time stretcher and I'm gonna set the source time to frame 95. Oops, there it is. I'm gonna run my background plate into the time stretcher and then run that into the paint node. So let's go ahead and view the paint node now. And we can see that no matter where we are, we're only looking at frame 95. So this is equivalent to the frame hold in Nuke. So we're working on frame 95, doesn't matter where I go in here, but I'm gonna keep it on 95. Again, just keeping things lined up, working well. I'm gonna change this to stroke. Let's go and make this bigger so we can see. And uh, right click scale to fit. And I wanna make sure I'm on my clone tool setup down here. Now with this selected, okay, stroke, clone tool, frame 95, we're all good. Just like in Photoshop, I can alt click and choose a source at that point, okay? And I really wanna make sure I do this well. I wanna get that super, super precise. So we're gonna choose maybe right about there. If I press and hold control and drag, I can scale up my, my brush. I'm gonna line up my mouse now, right here on the same reference. So I've got the door, the bottom of the door and the, the carpet here. I'm gonna match that as close as I can right here. And we're gonna just kind of paint this in. Now this will not be perfect. I, I can tell you right now from even doing my tests, painting on closet doors like this in, in solid surfaces is a nightmare. You would think it would be easy. It's actually quite difficult, but uh, we, we'll, we'll do our best to make it work. I can come down here, we're gonna fill in some of the carpet a little bit, right? That's all looking good like that. And now we're starting to see the edges from where we were before. Okay, not a problem. I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Alt, I'm gonna click right about there. And we're gonna paint out including the shadow, right? Because we wanna get rid of the shadow too, so we're gonna paint the shadow out like that. My line's a little bit off, but I think it'll be good enough for the purposes of this tutorial. 
think we'll be able to make that work just fine. Okay, come back in over here again, click. And I'm, again, I'm always using that, that corner, the bottom edge as my reference. And if we look, all right, that's gonna connect through just fine. Paint that out, whoops, paint this. There we go, about like that. And we're gonna say that's good. I could go through, I could smudge stuff around, we can mess with this a little bit more, but I think, I think that's gonna be just fine for our purposes. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. And we'll go ahead and scale this back down a little bit. Right click, scale to fit. So you could have done this inside of Photoshop, right? We could export frame 95, we could clean plate it in Photoshop using all of its amazing content aware stuff and then bring that back here inside of Fusion as another piece of media. But I did wanna show you that you can do that here inside of Fusion, even if you don't have Photoshop, all right? And the, the tools work just fine, I think. I might take my smudge tool or my smear tool here and see if I can kind of blend this in a little bit more. Okay, it's a little bit patchy. That's the problem of trying to do doors and stuff like that and flat surfaces that with no texture. The carpet you can see painted out just fine, but that part was a little bit of a struggle. What I'm going to do now, let's go and make some room. I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to now run this into my projection camera. Okay. And we still want to be on frame 95, which we are. This now gets ran into the 3D scene. Now, we want to make sure, if I look at my 3D scene, there's two cameras here. And you can't tell right now because both cameras are animated. We want to make sure that we freeze the motion of one camera. We want the projection camera to be locked off and not moving. So I'm gonna to go to frame 95. Okay, there we are. With my projection camera selected, I'm going to unlock it. I wanna to go to transform. And this is where all that keyframe data is. You can see all the keyframes down here. And we're just gonna wipe them out. Just right click and go remove all from translate group. Right click, remove all from rotate group. So if you right click under translation, it takes those out. If you right click under rotation, it takes those out. Let's go and lock it back up again. And now as we scan through, check this out. We literally have created a projector camera this camera does not move but we have our other camera right this one down here this is our actual animation this is the one that's now moving through the shot so i have a animated cam and i have a projected cam so that's going to be extremely helpful now i want to go into the projection cam let's go and keep that unlocked for now i'm going to go to projection i want to enable the projection and we're going to change it to texture okay Nothing's happening yet. Why, why isn't it working? We just did all this. Well, we need to give these objects, the ground and the wall, a material. So let's go ahead and add what's called a catcher. Whoops, there it is. And I'm gonna run that onto the ground and we're gonna run that onto the wall. And as I do, you can see that our projections magically appear. Check that out. And because we um, removed the animation, the projection is locked in place, allowing our animated camera to move around as if it's a 3D model. So that's pretty cool. Now, if we look at this, it looks okay, but we can see some things are not quite right. Especially if I begin to flatten it out like this, we can now really begin to see, here's the bottom edge of the door, but it's on our ground plane. And likewise, if I look down here, okay, I'm seeing a lot of the ground still on the wall plane. And we can see that the wall is actually dropped below where it should be. So there's two ways we can fix that in order to make it look good. All we care about now is making the projections look right. Everything's going to fall into place beautifully. This doesn't have to be actually aligned to our point clouds anymore. As long as the projections are built properly, everything will work out. I'm going to repeat that again. As long as your projections are built properly, which right now they're not, everything will work out. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to quickly show you why this doesn't work. And then we'll fix it and we'll show you then why it does work once we fix it. So let's go ahead and zoom out of our node graph. We're going to move this all down a bit like that. I might even flip flop these so I don't have any lines crossing each other. Keeping things nice, tidy and clean. That looks very nice like that. Okay, two cameras, got all that. And we've got this camera render node down here. And what is this? This is our moving camera rendering the scene. This is what the, the animation looks like. And we can see it pans around. And that is our shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to comp this on top of our plate. And then we're going to mask out around the sandbag. So let's go ahead and merge this on top. We're going to add a merge node. And we want to put our background, or excuse me, we want to put our foreground, which is this projection, 
over the background. In Nuke, we would say A over B. In this case, it's just foreground and background. So I can see there's my background. I'm going to run that into there. Okay. And then this is my foreground. We're going to run that into there. Let's go ahead and view it. Okay, everything's been painted out. That looks great. Let's go ahead and view the original shot. And we're going to add a polylon or a polygon mask. And I'm actually going to rename this one Roto. We'll drag it into the merge. Okay, nothing's happening yet because we're viewing our original shot. We're not viewing the merge right now. What I want to do, let's go ahead and make this big again, is uh, we will go ahead and start on our keyframe. Why not? Frame 95. And we're going to draw a mask. like that and let's go in uh, keyframe and split into place so I'm gonna go to my beginning frame and we're gonna kind of line it up I got a lot of extra space here I don't need we don't need to mask out everything right just we just want to mask out that sandbag so I'm gonna kind of line that up like that like that like that we'll go to our end frame that actually looks halfway decent we can work with it we'll just move it over a smidge Make sure it's got some room there with the shadows. Got to watch out for those shadows. And now we're just going to start tweening it. So I'll go to frame 45 and see how it looks here. I'm like, okay, let's go and move that up a little bit. Bam, about like that. Still got a little excess over here we can take in to trim some of the fat. Let's go right here in the middle. We're just being quick and sloppy. That's okay. It's all going to work out beautifully here at the end. Okay, that looks good. All right, I might need to tweak this some more. Yep, like right here. Had a lot of shaky motion right there in that part of the shot. So we'll just go and straighten that up. And it needs to be reset. Come back down. About over here. Uh, nope. <laughs> Just when you think you've got it. All right, that should get us started here. Let's go ahead and view the final shot. Okay. Now, if I play through and we look at this, watch watch the door here. We can see there's a little bit of slippage. It's not lined up properly, and that's because our projections are not lined up properly. Remember I told you that projections need to be lined up perfectly. We lined them up according to the point cloud, but they're not lined up in relation to the actual projection. So let's go ahead and fix that now. So we'll go ahead and move that up. I'm going to view my 3D merge and we're going to basically take this wall and modify uh, what we've got going on here. If I move the wall forward, you can see it actually raises the, the projection. Let me view like this. You can see a little bit better. You can see how it raises and lowers. So I want to get that bottom line lined up just, just perfect with the bottom. I might need to rotate a little bit. That's okay. We can do that. Okay. And we'll slide it back a little bit more. Rotate it a smidge more. How does it look from the front side? So somewhere right around in there that that's pretty good that's almost perfect let's move that just till it disappears we want to get rid of that white line right there there black scene that's the shadow from under the door now i know i've got this thing lined up perfectly if we go back to our merge here and let's go ahead and take our roto we can uh give it a little bit of a soft edge Increase the border width. Too much. We're just going to tweak this till we get it dialed in, figured out. Let's see what that does. Nope. Let's try that. There. That's looking nice. So, let's go ahead and play it. 
and that's looking pretty good. I might need to tighten up the roto a little bit more. And, you know, obviously we would spend a little bit more time on the, the patchwork. But I think you can see that we've, we've now succeeded of removing a sandbag by rebuilding our 3D scene and projecting a clean plate onto that 3D scene. Now, the cool part is that if I were to add text to this right now, uh, this would all clean up just beautifully. You're not even going to notice the, the bad patchwork nearly as much. If I bring up the, the sample from earlier, having the text in front hides your, your patches and your dirty patches and your eyes focused on the 3D text. It's not looking at the clean plate that was behind it. You wouldn't even know that there was something there. Now, if you're not putting 3D text or 3D stuff in front of your shot, then yeah, obviously it makes sense to, to do your best job on the patchwork. And that's where maybe doing a clean plate inside of Photoshop would come in handy and then bring that in here. And basically the Photoshop clean plate will replace these two nodes, our time stretcher and our paint node. Those get replaced by another media in or loader node of just the clean plate, run it through the projection cam and away you go. The other cool part about doing it inside of Photoshop is you can feather out your edges just the way you want. And you're not even going to need this roto at this point anymore because you're literally projecting a patch with an alpha channel that will um, just get overlaid beautifully on top of your shot. So with that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I hope you guys have learned something about projection mapping and how it can work for rig removal and especially complicated rig remo removals such as this when you're dealing with multiple three-dimensional planes. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Let me know what you would like to see next. I'm L Director. This is L Director Vision, and you've been watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget.